When we had last left the Spacefarer, their adventures on, on Mars and Sidonia continued, where they went to an abandoned mech factory. And it wasn't abandoned. There were spacers there. Big surprise. But also old mechs that were partially built. And then they went back to Neon to track down someone's father who was kind of a dick and give them whiskey and tell them to stop being kind of a dick. And then they were told about a weird secret at the hotel and they were to stay the night. Uh, it was the Hotel Vola, actually. <laughs> uh, this is Starfield. Welcome back. Zoop, zoop, zoop. Oh my god. This thing is like non-stop, huh? Hey, be careful not to point that thing at me. I didn't point it at you. Because they have little outposts everywhere. There were so many facilities abandoned after the colony war, the pirates used them as forward Welcome operating bases. All over the settled systems. Right. Okay. Yeah, making this just after a recent war does, like, afford you opportunities like that. And for there being a lot of abandoned places. Okay. Oh wait. I actually need to still rent the room, right? Rich, we have plenty of space available. Great. I want a room. I have one all set and ready to go. Okay. Just one night or an extended stay. I would like the extended stay. Extend my rental by one week. That's great. I know you'll enjoy your stay here. Yeah, especially if I get the little secret. Okay. What floor would it be again? Third, I think. Because second floor was where we saw the other guy, right? Or maybe I'm getting at the... Oh, whoops, sorry. Let's see. Second floor. Of course. <laughs> okay. Pop this open. Anything here? Oh, look. Hey, it's a circle. Dun, dun. <laughs> Fuck, I, I keep forgetting how it sounds. <laughs> All right. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> I think that's it. Okay. Huh. Ew. Oh, I don't really like that. Yeah, I don't like that at all. What's even the point of there being glass there? <laughs> what's, what's the fucking point of that? Okay, sure. Bunch of glasses. No actual reading material. Oh. Oh, wow. There's actually... Wow, adds a bankable auto attempt for hacking. Holy shit. What's it say? The Cyber Runner's Handbook. The Megacorps have met their match. No neon too bright. Number four. One more bankable auto attempt. Okay. And another one of these strange walk-in kitchens. <laughs> you know, it's great for venting the air. I mean, I guess it kind of all goes through this, right? So you do have that. Thank goodness. All right. Let's sleep right here. We'll go for seven local hours. Why not? Oh! <laughs> Look at Aunt Tracia. Okay. Sure. She's having fun, too. This part of the soundtrack reminds me so much of Fallout 4. Come on. Maybe even yeah, just this song okay. in general reminds me of Fallout 4. It's very evocative of it. There we are. Over here. And let's head on down to the lobby. And we'll speak with Minerva about the secret. Alright, Minerva. Are you here to book a room? Welcome nope, I'm here to hear nice to a little today. secret. Yeah, want to let me in on your little secret about how you beat the system? Maybe after you've rented a room for a few nights, I might let you in on my secret. For now, it'll just have to remain a mystery. Sorry, I just need some time to see if I can trust you. I'm sure you understand. Come on, what the hell? I rented a room for like a week. I need a room. I've got one with your name on it. How long are you planning on staying? Uh, here, extend my rental by one day. Fantastic, you're all set. Okay. Welcome to the Hotel Voli. Alright, how about the secret? 
Well, my yes. sources say you've checked out, so I don't see the harm. Administrator Bay, you and I, we have a sort of understanding. Call it a pact. He lets me do pretty much whatever I want at my hotel, and in return, I make sure certain information stays off of SSNN. Oh. Okay. Apologies, by the way, if you can hear snoring in the distance. It is the dear sweet love dog who has fallen asleep watching. Uh, I'm amazed he's letting you get away with that. That information must be incredibly damaging. That's none of my business. What exactly is SSNN? Aren't you afraid for your life? What exactly is SSNN? The Settled Systems News Network. You know, the press. Aren't you afraid for your life? People ask me that all the time. They also ask me why I don't just pack up and leave Neon. I'll tell you the same thing I tell them. The only way to keep Bayou and people like him in check is to hold something over their head. They don't understand anything else. Every mm. single time he looks from his penthouse and sees my hotel, I know that the tiniest chill runs up his spine. That's what keeps me going. I'm amazed he's letting you get away with that. That information must be incredibly damaging. It's none of my business. I'm amazed he's letting you get away with it. If you knew what I knew, you wouldn't be amazed at all. You'd be horrified. Tell me. I have compromising data that proves Bayou is directly connected to the Sayoka Syndicate. And before you ask, the only way I'll ever leak the info is if I'm dead and gone. Then it gets sent to, well, I can't tell you who, but it's covered. Look, I've already said way too much, so for both of our sakes, maybe we should keep this under wraps. Okay? Huh. Okay. Let me know if I can help you while you're visiting Neon. Sure. I mean, we're going to have to kill you then, at some point, huh? <laughs> Depending on uh, how we approach this quest that it seems like you're a part of, we will have to kill you. Okay. Well, we've got that dealt with. Let's head over to Stroud's... Yeah, the Stroud Eklund Star Yard. Take care of that real quick. Welcome, Off-Worlder, to the Hotel Bolide! Your home Is that it? Really? Ebside? No shot. That's not it. We know that's not it, right? It's looping us outside, ain't it? Because it's like over here, right? Or on the other side. There is legal question that region has some influence here. I wonder how Mr. Bayou feels about that. No, not over here. Okay. Oh, uh, maybe if you join up with Ryujin, they are at odds with Bayou. Okay. Here. Hey, no funny stuff with that boost pack. Got enough flight traffic as it is. Oh, okay, okay. Maybe it is over at. No, where was? <laughs> where the fuck was Stroud Eklund at? Oh my God, I bet we've gone by it. I haven't been looking for it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's right there. Maybe we legit have to go out to the Star Yard, though. Like, does this count? Yeah, this is the showroom. You know what? Fuck it. Maybe it is at Ebb's side. Okay. Hey. The Tracker's Alliance always finds their mark. Okay. Sure. Let's get out of here. Alright. I, I do wonder how they'll handle DLC for Starfield a career change, to be if honest. they will flesh out right stuff then? that already exists in the game the kids are older now. that hasn't been like super delved into or maybe they will um, maybe they'll like add in brand new stuff because I remember that to be the case with Fallout 4 Right? With the DLC for Fallout 4, where a lot of folks, myself included, thought we would get more information on, like, the Gunners, or, um, well, mostly the Gunners, right? <laughs> of Fallout 4. Uh, but, 
there wasn't really much about them in any of the DLC, right? There was a shitload of stuff about, like, the Children of Adam, which was one of the, the factions that folks were wondering about. But otherwise, it added newer stuff, like, in Nuka World and all of that, you know? Nuka World wasn't really tied to anything from the core game, right? It did... It did inter... What, what would you say? Intermingle with the core game a lot? But that's about it. Alright, where the fuck am I going? Where the fuck am I going? <laughs> Do I just need to go to the showroom? Oh shit. Wait, where is... Is it not here? Is it on a different fucking planet? Hold up. Oh my god, it's, it's somewhere else. Oh shit, what? Oh my god, it's it's out here. Oh fuck, okay. All right, yeah, of course, of course it's out there, you know? Oh. A large anomaly on a planet that matches the signature of one of the artifacts, Voli Epsilon. Should we do that? No, let's, let's, let's hold out, right? It's not too tough to get back to a different system or whatever. Let's instead go to the Stroud Eklund Star Yard. Okay, good. Let's head over to our ship. There we are. Oh, you know what folks wrote in? I forgot Always if I brought it up yet. Always a satisfying moment to return to your ship. That sometimes there are the the fucking ship technician walks off the side of of the fucking like platform, and will the reason why you can't see it is because they have just they have just like ambiently walked off the side, <laughs> and that may be what has happened to us. Holy shit! It's really dark and scary down there. Where would they have walked off at? Oh my god, I can't see anything. Alright, here goes nothing. Oh, fuck. I just got some contusions? Is there anyone down here? Oh, here, I can use my sense star stuff. There's Andresia, falling non-stop inside of the... <laughs> okay. Huh. Yeah, I don't think anyone is down here. Okay. Yeah, weird. Alright, quick loan back up. Maybe we'll have to check during the daytime when it's easier to see. That said, we had the sense star stuff. Though I, I, admittedly, I guess I don't know the the range on it. Huh. Okay. Good, good, good. Let's head on back up in Don't here. Hey, Vasco. Oh shit! I should have went to cockpit. Oh my god! My bad. I'm such a fool. Hey, Barrett. Hello, Captain. Oh shit! You've got something for me? I don't. And up here. Great. I don't have, like, any resources on me that I need to get rid of, right? Yeah. We're fine. Okay. There we are. And let's head out to this star yard. Take off. You think I think. You zag, I zag. I am the your fucking king huh? Your shadow. Your Look at fucking... <laughs> Fucking Vasco mounted like R2 on top of her ship. <laughs> that motherfucker is not coming off of there either. Okay. Stable orbit achieved. We can stay here forever. Well, for a while anyway. Let us track this. Man, so it's a whole ass location unto itself. 
And what is this star station, I wonder? Maybe we'll have to go to it. Okay. Let's jump it. Maybe there'll be an enemy we can fight. We do need to fight more enemy spaceships, right? Like a shitload, right? Whoa! I love the feeling after a perfect jump. I hear Constellation has been collecting a ton of new things. Ancient things. Do you think people are starting to notice? Yeah. People are definitely noticing. Does does the creamy man's dialogue change as we like progress through the storyline? Is that what's going on? Wow, look at the star yard for real. Cool. Okay. Let's hail them. Stroud Eckland is open for business. Come aboard and let's see about getting you a solid upgrade. All right, let's do it. I'm actually here to upgrade you. Ship okay. is now docked. Perfect. Didn't even smudge the paint. You know how they're going to do it in Elder Scrolls 6, right? You already know. It's going to be a Dwemer like cog or whatever, right? <laughs> Because BGS keeps trying to incorporate that, like, cog design that they use for their own, uh, like, logo or whatever, right? They incorporate it into everything since Fallout 4. Uh, obviously, the vault doors rolling and opening. Here, it's... And, and they don't play it up too much, but it's ve it very much looks like it. And it seems very intentional that they made it look this way, you know? But um, here, it, it seems to be... Whenever you go to dock with something, it looks like their COG logo. And in Elder Scrolls 6, it could so easily fit in as being um, the, what do you call it? A Dwemer COG of some sort. I was beginning to wonder if you hibernate. Okay, take it easy, Andresia. Let's see, let's go over here. It's not my fault you never sleep, and you're always awake, always staring, you're handling always this judging. Old captain thing really well, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're you're not wrong. You're the first person who's really acknowledged how well I'm I'm doing at this. <laughs> Thanks, Barrett. By the way, Barrett, I don't know how to fucking get through here except through you. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, let me through. There we go. Thank you, Barrett. Oh wait. Oh shit. Right. We're yes? okay. Fuck. <laughs> Alright, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Let's see. Up here. Oh, there we go. Oh, how the fuck do I get out of my ship? Oh, that's not it. Oh, <laughs> fuck. I've moved everything around. Okay, it must be through the bottom then. You know? It's gotta be. Okay. Right? I hear constellation has been Oh fuck, how do I <laughs> How do I get get the fuck out of here? Oh my god, I forgot where I put my dock <laughs> my like fucking docking zone thing at. Oh Jesus. Is this it? Oh, thank goodness. Okay, it is. Okay. Nailed it. Alright, Barrett, don't tell anyone what you saw. I was just doing the rounds. I was just patrolling, making sure everything was up Any to Any adventure so. you can fly away from. Is is that how the saying goes? Captain. Okay. Hey, Vasco. Thanks for hanging out. I'm Walter Stroud. And on behalf of Stroud... <sighs> Let me know if you have it. Walter is quite proud of what his company has accomplished. Shut up, Andres. I want to hear his ad. New starships at prices that are out of this world. Oh my You've god. The rest. It's time you try. Everything's so Eklund. new here. 
<laughs> Holy shit. That's him, huh? Man. That's maybe the most cork-like I've heard him sound. Like I said, I, I don't have terribly much experience with DS9, but I feel like the spirit pervades. Okay. Hey, if you need what's anything, up? just ask. Haversha. A pleasure to meet you. Welcome to the premier star yard in the settled systems. That's what they it all may say. Be new, but I think you'll see why everyone's talking about us. Your star yard looks very impressive. What's different about Stroud Eklund ships? What's different? The other star yards have been in business so long that they're set in their ways. Take Deimos. They've been making spaceships since my grandfather's grandfather's days. So we looked at every facet of these elderly corporations for opportunities to revolutionize and innovate. If you don't believe me, see for yourself. Are you? You look like you could be related to Stroud Eklund. Are you? Uh, your star yard looks very impressive. Thank you. So, what sort of ship are you looking for? Um, are there... Are the ships here really better than other star yards? In my opinion, yes. Trident and Tayo both value style over substance in their own way. Deimos is positively ancient, very set in their ways, and Hope Tech? Well, you don't look like you want a space barge. Wait, maybe I do. I think I do, though. Let's see what you have, though. Oh. Oh, was that them talking back there? <laughs> okay, I'd like to view and modify. Absolutely. What other parts do you have here? You got you got anything good? You got anything cool? Let's see. Just out of curiosity. Add structural. Yeah, it's all the Stroud pieces. Okay. I'm surprised that they even have shields and stuff like that here. I mean, I guess if they are constructing them here, they, they need to have something like that. Oh, weird. Look at these. Huh. There are reactors that aren't circular. Okay. Hmm. I mean, this one seems... Oh, it's a it's a B. Or no, it's an A, I should say. Oh, this is good, though. I can just barely afford it. Oh, no, you need piloting rank 3. Even though it's a B class. That's wild. Okay. Man, look at these big fucking things, too. Holy shit. Wait, you need piloting rank 4? Wait, do I have piloting rank 3? My god, man, maybe I do. Okay. Yeah, so we're currently at 21. Fuck it, let's throw on one of these other motherfuckers here. Yeah. Okay. Here, let's try and do the upgrade situation. Let's try this out. I should like to upgrade my reactor. I cannot. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, let's see then. Let's get rid of this. And then we'll delete that. Add. This fancy piece of tech. Man, what an expensive one as well. Holy wackadoo. Okay. Go and we'll pop that right there. Great. Does it automatically match our color scheme? I don't know that it does. It's kind of hard to see though. Okay. There we go. Color. Oh no, all of our faved colors went away. Oh dear. Okay, you know what? It's fine. We, we don't need to color that thing, do we? Maybe we can futz around here a bit. Oh dear lord. 
What a fucking mess. <laughs> okay. How about this? What is this changing? I don't see anything changing. This? Oh dear, okay. Let's do a You know what? Fuck it, let's let's just go back to default. Okay. I wonder if it's because of the update. Okay, you know what? That's fine. That's good. What else do you need than that? Okay. And then... Hmm. Well, we really aren't going to have that much money left. So, you know what? That's fine. Exit. All items will be moved to the cargo hold. There are warnings for the ship in the flight check. Confirm modification anyway? No, that's fine. Accept. Okay. Good. Great, now we have to sell off more bullshit. Okay. <laughs> hey, who are you? Are you Jules? I can't decide which model to get. This place is something else. Okay, sure. How about Demos you? Or a Stroud Eklund. Hmm. My business is switching to Stroud Eklund. It just makes sense. It just makes sense. Stroud Eklund. Habershaw's in the showroom if you're ready to buy. Okay. Oh. Hey, I think I just bought this thing. Okay. What is this? An engine? Are those the engines we use? I think so. Stroud Eklund sales computer. Whoa. Stroud Eklund delivery contacts. Oh shit. Dry Dock Blues, Stroud Eklund Star Yard. What? This gave me a quest? Stroud Eklund is only able to craft these amazing ships with a dedicated support network of miners and traders. Although by law we cannot offer more than the standard trade authority compensation, why not work with a company that cares? Contact our award-winning salesman, Haversaw, for further details. Profit and satisfaction awaits. Wow. And then you can actually work for him? <laughs> I mean, we already kind of work for him. Just not in this capacity. I heard they're making a new class of ship here. Really? A D-class? Haversaw can help you if you need anything. We have a state-of-the-art R&D department here. Okay. I came out of curiosity, but... Some of these specs. Impressive. Oh yeah, it's very impressive. I got a new reactor. Look, Andresia is so stoked she just jumps all over fucking Welcome town. Welcome to Stroud Eklund. Okay, let's head back here. Alright, surprise everybody. Y'all thought I was here to b upgrade my ship? It's true, but also I'm here to upgrade you. Hi there. Jules Degante. Hello. I'm here to speak to you about this new ship project. So you're the project lead. What does that mean? Have you been leading the R&D team for long? You're the project lead? What does that mean? It means I'm responsible for making sure our projects are carried through to completion. I'm not the one calling all the shots per se, but I do need to ensure the people making those calls are empowered to do that within the limits the executive set for us. Have you been leading the R&D team for long? It might surprise you to hear that no, I have not. This is actually the first project I've led for Stroud Eklund. I recently graduated with a master's degree in engineering management. Engineering I'm management? I'm actually kind of surprised they hired me, but I was at the top of my class, so maybe they didn't want to lose me to some other star yard. Anyway, I'm grateful for the chance to do good work here. I'm here to speak to you about this new ship project. You must be Walter's colleague. He informed me that you'd be taking charge of Project Kepler despite the fact that we have a fully dedicated R&D staff already assigned to it. But that's okay. I'm sure that even though you have virtually no experience with this, <laughs> you'll do a great job. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Pretty wild uh, thing to have me do. Starship design. Actually, I have plenty of experience designing starships. I'm going to give it my best shot. Drop the passive aggression or Walter will find out. Whatever, let's get this over with. I'll be honest, I still have no idea why Walter trusts me to do this. Alright. Actually, I have plenty of experience designing starships. 
Oh. Ah. Uh, I just assumed. You know what? I'm really sorry. I should trust Walter knew what he was doing. My bad. I mean, he didn't know either. Even so, we have plenty of designers. As you probably know, we're tasked with coming up with Strout Eklund's next hit starship. But we have budget concerns, market research to finish, and we can't seem to agree on a design. So I guess Walter sent you to resolve these issues. Have at it. Wow, there's a lot of starship design checks here. Starship design. I'm familiar with the process. Let's get to it. I think I understand. I'm ready. Yeah, yeah, stand back and maybe I'll teach you a thing or two. Can you tell me a little about the team? What's so hard about choosing what kind of ship to build? I think we can ask these without progressing. Tell me a little bit about the team. Sure. I'm Jules, R&D project lead. I am, was, the one making all the big decisions. I suppose I just coordinate now. You already heard from Frank. He's lead designer on the project, focused on the look and feel of the ships. There's Ella, another senior designer. She focuses on some of the more technical designs of ships. Went to school with Frank. Mike is our senior engineer, responsible for consulting on all the technical bits. The machinery, the computer systems, etc. And then there's Nev. She's here for marketing. It's her job to weigh in and sell this thing to consumers. What's so hard about choosing what kind of ship to build? There are a lot of factors to consider. Who is our market and what do they want in a ship? Which components are we putting into it? How fast should it go? How much cargo capacity should it have? What color should it be? We need to decide every little detail. All right, well, fortunately, I'm familiar with the process. Let's get to it. Ah, right, so you mentioned. Let's move on to solving our budget issues then, shall we? We were charged with building the newest, hottest ship on the market, which won't be possible unless we petition the board for more money. So we have two new budget proposals. One will allow us to build what I consider to be a very sensible ship, but we'll have to make some tough design cuts. The other will allow us much more flexibility to put whatever we want into the ship. It's what I call the kitchen sink proposal. I don't love it, but it'll be next to impossible to approve. What should we go with? Oh, man. A smaller budget will help us focus the design. Let's stick with your sensible budget proposal. We can build whatever we want with a larger budget. Let's go with the kitchen sink proposal. Why can't you use the original budget you were given? What kind of cuts would we have to make for the sensible design budget? It'd be funny if the reason why they couldn't use the original budget is because he took a lot of the money out to buy the artifact. That I gave away! <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with the kitchen sink budget? Wouldn't everyone get what they want? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> is is this just like meant to be also trying to give players an insight into like building a game? <laughs> the difficulties of- Sorry, uh, this is awkward and I'm not quite sure what to do. So I really hope you're just messing with me. Of creating like a large AAA video game that requires hundreds of people to work. Huh. Why, why can't you use the original budget you were given? I'd love to, seriously. It would be a huge win for us if we came in under or at that budget. But none of the viable designs for this project can be made for that amount. I've already rejected that budget, so I have to go to the board regardless. And since you're now responsible for the major decisions, which budget proposal we go with falls on you. What kind of cuts would we have to make for the sensible design budget? It's more that we can only choose certain design elements at the expense of others. In other words, if we go with something in Mike's design, there's not enough money in the budget for what Ella wants. That's one of the reasons we haven't been able to agree on anything. What's wrong with the kitchen sink budget? Wouldn't everyone get what they want? While it's true we'd be able to afford to put anything and everything into that design, it's just not practical. And the board will put more pressure on us to see that it succeeds. I worry that without constraints, my team will be disincentivized to focus this ship in any given direction. And they'll try to cram in everything but the kitchen sink, hence the name. Who knows what kind of monstrosity we'd create if we tried to incorporate all of our designs? And would something that expensive actually sell? 
Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, sure. Uh, let's let's go with your idea. That <laughs> sounds great. A smaller budget will help us focus the design. Let's stick with your sensible budget proposal. That sounds good to me. But remember, this ship will have fewer bells and whistles. We're not going to be able to include everything we want. Frank's luxury design has the most expensive components, and we've been having trouble convincing him to move away from that idea so we can stay within the budget. We need his help. Do you think you can get him to budge? Yeah, do you want me I to beat right him up? here, you know. God, I love that they gave him this, like, man bun situation. <laughs> okay, persuade. Yes. Now let's talk about what we can cut from your design, Frank. Actually, I need to think about this some more. Why do I have to convince you? Isn't Jules the project leader? Why do I have to convince you? Yes, but I am the lead designer on the project. All design proposals need to go through me. How can I be expected to approve something I fundamentally disagree with? Alright, yeah, let's talk about what we can cut from your design, Frank. I already gave my answer to Jules. We cut nothing. Please, Frank, listen to reason. You seem reasonable. Let's just think about this a bit more. I'm sure if you're able to accomplish your goal uh, with a lower budget, the board will take notice. Let's say that. Oh my god, it worked. It might be a good challenge, actually. And if I impress them, they'll be willing to give me more to work with next time. Fine. I see what you're saying. Perhaps we tone down the luxury aspects a bit. Does it really need so much gold trim? Probably not. For what it is worth, I believe that is the correct approach. Luxury should not be the goal here. Also, Frank annoys me. <laughs> Great. That's one problem solved. I'll go forward with that budget proposal and we can move on. Next, we need to gather some market data. The best way to do this is to outfit your ship with some sensors and take it through some real-world scenarios so we can make more informed design decisions. Okay, sure, sounds good. Just tell me what I need to do. Not right now. I'll come back later. Why me? Aren't there better ways of gathering that kind of data? Why me? Well, Mr. Stroud believes you fit in our target demographic. We heard about some of your adventures, and we tend to agree that getting data from someone like you will be helpful. Frankly, most of our test pilots played a little too safe, and the scenarios we run don't push the limits as much as we can get away with legally. Mm. But luckily, we don't have those same concerns with you, because you're not technically employed by us, and Walter trusts you. Yep, I'm dangerous. I'm a threat. I'm incredibly volatile. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, just tell me what I need to do. Great. Just pick up a mission or two at the mission board and proceed like you normally would. We'll collect the data when you return. Perfect. If you take on a variety of missions, we can build a ship to handle a variety of scenarios. But if you just fly one mission, we can build a more focused ship. It's up to you. In the meantime, you might also want to talk with the team. Get to know them. Give feedback on their proposals, etc. Good luck out there. Give feedback on the team's proposals. Okay, cool. Man, you know what? I haven't really seen this outfit in action. And although I'm not too fond of it, I gotta say, the attention to detail on it is pretty astoundingly good. Uh, the gentle ribbing here on the sleeve and whatnot... It tends to match up, especially from the front. That data from your ship is going to be critical to our design process, assuming you can handle the missions. Like, see how the ribbing here on the on the sleeve connects with the ribbing on the torso section? We really afford a new ship. Like, in the back, it doesn't always do that, which isn't super necessary, but especially on the front, that's like the sign of, like, a really well-made piece of clothing. <laughs> Sorry. And it would be even more so if it matched up all all the way around, obviously. But uh, a sign of it being poorly made is when it's not matched up at all. There's no, like, pattern matching. But in this case, it's not so much pattern as the ribbing itself. We are. All right. Oh. You know, just got a circuit board and grapes. Sure. Okay, well, let's start with Frank. I haven't even heard of, from anyone else yet. You know, I have designed spacecraft for over 10 years. So, 
You must have really impressed Walter for him to give you this project. Or maybe it's a bit of nepotism. Never mind that. <laughs> Perhaps he sees in you what he sees in me. Whoa, okay. Jules asked me to give some feedback on your ship design proposal. Let's hear it. Whoa, what are they talking about? Still to go from literally nothing to ships that give Tayo a run for its money. Have you seen the specs on the Adonis? I'd rather be in a ship that can defend itself. I don't want to be a target. Maybe the Venture then. Huh. I know you wish I wasn't here to give you feedback, so let's get this over with. Ten years of experience isn't as much as you seem to think it is. Can you tell me about yourself? What do you think Walter sees in you? Us. Can you tell me about yourself? As a designer, I see the beauty in our craft and deliver that to the consumer. My desire is to make flying in our ships a joy to all the senses. I have won awards. I am proud of my work. But I do not like to brag. <laughs> Rather, my goal is to change the board's perception of employees like myself from mere cogs in the corporate machine to value us as artists and let us do as we please. God, you, yeah, you are a designer, huh? Okay, what do you think Walter sees in you or us? My hope is that he sees the passion in our work. In truth, I know he values me, but he has yet to truly cut me loose from the corporate reins and let me do as I wish. But, I understand Walter has given you much greater control of our project. Perhaps I can learn from you and convince him I'm ready for the same. Okay. Jules asked me to give some feedback on your ship design proposal. Let's hear it. Ah, yes. At least you may be more open to my ideas than my colleagues. Maybe this is a blessing in disguise. Imagine a luxury craft designed for the most discerning of tastes. Every feature designed for comfort and peace of mind. High-end performance, precision engineering, a spacecraft for those who wish to be seen. This will be the most elite personal craft on the market. What a great idea. It seems like a worthwhile goal. You're onto something, but I think you need to define your pitch a little better. I've had better ideas come out of fever dreams. How would you design a ship like that? I mean, yeah, but the problem is who would buy it? It's like, what's her name said? Like, what's the market for that? Especially from Stroud Eklund's current, like, customer base. How would we design a ship like that? The ship should be mid-size, spacious, but not bulky. We'll want to build it with the highest quality, most expensive modules available. Oh, I was only one to use the safe, worst ones. But not threatening. Focus on defensive measures, not aggressive weaponry. Above all, you should be able to picture your favorite celebrity, or Walter himself, flying this ship and influencing others to buy as well. Ah. Oh, I like that. Fun fact, that's that was like the original, and still currently, the same like design goals and ideas behind... Ralph Lauren. <laughs> it's, it's very much inspired by, like, um, American celebrity culture, right? It, a lot of it is from, like, film. Like, Americana as it appears in film through the lens of filmography in cinema. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I, I, I know a little bit about this stuff nowadays. All right. What a great idea. That seems like a worthwhile goal. You're on to something, but I think you need to define your pitch a little better. Mm. Go with that. I think I understand what you mean. It is not enough to say it's a high-end luxury ship. Who is flying this ship? Where do they go? What is their story? And why do they crave such attention? Oh, thank you. I will think on this and improve on my proposal. I mean, that's a means to an end, right? What was that about wanting to sell this ship Today, to celebrities? Sometime? Why is that so important? What's going on, Frank? Why so defensive about your design? Why is it so important to sell the ship to celebrities? Two words. Conspicuous consumption. Are you familiar with this concept? Yeah. 
Yeah, I think I see what you're getting at. I'm not really sure what it is. Words, words, words. Give me the short version. Let's hear what he has to say. I'm not really sure what it is. <laughs> of course not. Whoa, it's when okay. someone buys something expensive, mostly because it is expensive in an effort to show off their wealth to others. Right. So, if we target what the wealthy elite and celebrities want and sell the ship at a premium, they will buy it and others will follow in order to be trendy. Imagine a star like Borealis is seen getting out of one of our luxury ships. Everyone is going to want one so they too can feel like a celebrity. Yeah, but if the pricing is only set for celebrities, like, are you trying to only sell it to other celebrities? What's going on, Frank? Why so defensive about your design? Because I am the lead designer on the project. It is literally my job to design it. It is frustrating because I keep getting pushback. And Jules has this idea that we will make a better product by designing it all together. Since everyone has equal say, it led us to a standstill. It was much easier before. Why work here if, you're, if you seem so unhappy with the way things are? Just because I do not like how corporate we have become doesn't mean I don't like getting paid. Besides, with every successful ship I design, I believe I can influence the company to shift away from typical corporate bullshit and back to taking risks by pursuing art and innovation. <laughs> then again, here we are. Okay. Yeah, yeah. See you. All right. How about you, uh, Nev Papadopoulos? Um, hi. <laughs> Need something? What do you do here again? Yeah, I I'm supposed to talk to you about your ship design proposal and give feedback. You seem a little on edge. Something wrong? Something wrong? Oh, no. Well, it's just... I'm a little new here, and everyone's got these big, flashy designs. And I'm supposed to come up with one too, but like, I don't know if it's as good or like, good at all, even. I'm sure it's just as good as the other ones, if not better. Nothing I've heard so far has blown me away, so it can't be any worse. You're probably right, but I need to hear all the proposals. Huh. Nothing so far I've heard has blown me away. Can't be any worse. Can I tell you? Part of me was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> so, I was thinking that we could really use a recreational craft in our fleet. But not like super luxurious like our Adonis pleasure yacht, something marketed more towards families. Something mom and dad could pack up and take the kids on vacation. <laughs> you probably think that's stupid, right? A recreational ship seems like a great idea. It's unique and fun. If I'm being honest, it's not really my sort of thing. I don't know how well it'd sell. I have to be honest, that's a pretty awful idea. Do you really think that kind of ship is in demand? What would it take to design a ship like that? It, For me, I think it really depends on who Stroud Eklund's current customer base is. Uh, do you really think that kind of ship is in demand? I used to go off-world camping with my family when I was a kid. The other families we met always complained their ships weren't quite adequate for family vacations. They never had enough room, and the kids would always fight. I've done some market research, and like, no ship manufacturer seems to be making ships for things like this. Which means even if the demand is low, we can fill this niche and still sell a lot. Hmm. What would it take to design a ship like that? Hmm. I haven't thought of all the details, but... I'd imagine lots of passenger space would be a top priority. A mid-sized ship with enough room for one, or, or maybe even two or three families to spread out and relax. I don't think it'd need any fancy weapons or scientific equipment, so it should be pretty affordable. Families don't want to spend a fortune, so keeping the cost low will help guarantee plenty of sales. Right. A recreational ship seems like a great idea. It's unique and fun. If I'm being honest, it's not really my sort of thing. I don't know how well it'd sell. No, I do actually think it, it'd sell. I don't think it's unique and fun, necessarily. I think it's it's a very good, like, 
idea for keeping the money flowing you know <laughs> i think it's a very good normal idea i don't i wouldn't call it unique and fun i would call it a safe bet a recreational ship seems like a great idea it's unique and fun oh really wow i am <laughs> thank you i'm really glad i told you about it well, if we end up making it, I swear I'll work up a hell of an ad campaign for it. So, what's it like to do marketing for a ship manufacturer like this? It's... interesting. <laughs> I'm new, and I've never done anything like this before coming here. M marketing for ships, specifically, that is. There are so many things to think of for different demographics, like style, features, cost, and all that. And you also need to think about offensive and defensive capabilities, because space is dangerous and people need to feel like the ship they're buying is safe. <laughs> you mentioned you were new. What did you do before this? Yeah, I've only been here for a few months. I did a little marketing for chunks before this, but it was really more of for an chunks? internship. <laughs> Ships are like totally different than that. Yeah, they're I chunks. For the job yeah, they're, I <laughs> they're pretty be different. I never expected to be hired. That said, Stroud Eklund did have that one chunk shaped ship. Do you like working here? So far, I do. But, um, <clears throat> just between you and me, I feel like I'm in a little over my head. I, I feel like I have no idea what I'm doing. But my bosses really seem to like my work, so... I don't know. I mean, I guess I'm doing something right. <sighs> I still feel weird pitching ideas to people who have been at this for so much longer than I have. Okay. I mean, uh, that's fair. See you later. How about you, Mike Ababio? I'm wondering if we need another chef in the kitchen. Then again... I hear Walter brought you in to finally make a decision around here. I'm glad to be of service then. It sounds like you have an issue with me. Has that been a problem? Uh, well, how do I put this? My co-workers are, are smart people. But between you and me, they're in way over their head with this project. Uh, Jules especially. She's new at being a project lead and has insisted we design by committee. So everyone's voice is heard admirable but no one could agree on anything and we're running significantly behind because of it yeah i think you're absolutely right yeah that that is 100 percent the issue you're you're 100 percent right right like like when it comes to big projects like this like it sucks and it seems kind of unfair but otherwise like this happens you know it becomes it things get to a standstill you know, no one can decide on anything. Okay. I'll be glad to be of service then. Good. Just so long as you don't push us to make anything too nutty. I think your decisiveness will put us back on the right track. Speaking of which, I think my plan will get us where we need to be as quickly and efficiently as possible. It's simple, no frills, and most importantly, won't cause me any major headaches on the engineering side. Sounds like a win for your team. Go on. Wow, you're really selling it with that unenthusiastic pitch. Okay, but first, what can you tell me about your role here? Sounds like this project is hard on the engineers. Why is that? What can you tell me about your role here? <sighs> Couldn't figure it out from the engineering talk. I'm an engineer, mate. It means I'm the one who's got to put together all these plans and actually make the bloody ship fly. Been doing it for going on 25 years at various star yards. <laughs> they still haven't realized this place would fall apart if not for me. And instead of letting me get to my work, they keep giving me fancy new titles and got me tied up in endless meetings like this one. Sounds like this project is hard on the engineers. Why is that? Oh, let me tell you. All the creative minds around here are so concerned with designing the most innovative and fancy ships possible. They never stop to think about the kind of work it takes to do that in a reasonable time frame. Yes, we're engineers, 
Our job is to make the bloody impossible possible. But that doesn't mean it's easy or practical. That and there's never enough of us to go around. All right. Well, sounds like a win for your team. Go on. It's truth, and we need it. The others believe we need to think big and innovate. Reality is, we just need to do what we do better than anyone else. So I'm thinking, there's loads of fighters. No sense in mucking about with that again. And we've already got one of the best luxury liners in the biz. What I figure is, the cargo running business is booming, and no one's quite built a personal craft like that to serve the working class folk. Nothing fancy, no frills. Just a simple, sturdy, inexpensive ship with cargo room up the wazoo and make it so easy my cousin's little moppet could fly it. I love it. You're on the right track with this idea. Maybe you can make your pitch a little more exciting. Of all the proposals we've got, that's certainly one of them. Seems simple enough. Any other design considerations? I think he's 100% right, but this is the wrong company to make that product. If, if Stroud Eklund already has a foot in the door of luxury liner ships, right? Frankly, the, the lead designer's idea would be more feasible of a sell for Stroud Eklund, right? I think next down the line actually would be, uh, what's her name, who we just got done talking to. Have it be a recreational vehicle, like a luxury sort of-esque ship, but for families that's Boy, affordable. Something got your tongue? I think um, going with, with like a hauler ship, that, that sounds way more like Deimos. Or from what little we know, Hope Tech or something, right? Stroud Eklund sounds like a bad fit for it. Seems simple enough. Any other design considerations? Our objective should be to build a huge ship with plenty of cargo room while keeping the cost low. Doesn't need fancy equipment, just the basics. Basic weapons, basic defenses, basic scanners. You get the idea. If we go with a design like that, I can focus on quality construction and the ship will practically sell itself. Maybe you can make your pitch a little more exciting. Hmm. Yes. Of course. Zhuzh it up. Just enough to disappoint me even more when we ultimately end up choosing something ridiculous. Thanks. So, you're kind of like the lead engineer here. <laughs> yep, that's me, innit? Been here since the start of the company. Done engineering for going on 30 years total. Though I keep telling them, it's senior, not lead engineer. I've got no interest in being lead. Too much management. Not enough tactile work. <laughs> and yet here I am. Resigned to my fate on the R&D team. You don't like being involved in research and development? Nope. Not really. I like to think I don't have the ego for it. I've got nothing to prove, and I don't rightly care to make my mark on the industry. All I want to do is build the best damn starships I can, and not get bogged down with all the excess particulars. But upper management loves the work I do, and they wouldn't let me say no to this. I guess they needed someone to keep everyone's heads out of the clouds. So here I am. Who is upper management? You mean Walter? Hmm. Okay. What do you think of Stroud Eklund? I assume you mean the company and not the people. Because even if I didn't already think so, I'd tell you that both Walter and Issa are great. The company is still kind of young as far as Star Yards go, but it seems to be going in the right direction despite what it may look like. I've been doing this for a while at other Star Yards, and so far, we're avoiding a lot of the mistakes some of the older corps have made. Okay, Maybe sure. Hope we didn't scare you off, huh? Nah, all right, let's head over here. Good, I mean, you know, some people get fulfilled at, at work by different things, right? If you are, are at a point where you're you're not having to work for, like, survival, right? Some people find it more fulfilling to go into, like, creative design pursuits, right? They find that fulfilling. And other people, like, in this situation with Mike, they do prefer being able to physically make something and, like, putting it together in the tactile sense, right? Being able to see other people using and enjoying what they have made, 
right? Whereas other people have a lot of fun in the uh, design area, you know? But of course, there's far more design or er, <laughs> demand for people who are able to or desire to put things together physically, right? Who do enjoy what Mike does rather than the conceptual stuff, right? Because for every conceptual person, you need like a shitload more people who are willing to put uh, the hammer to the nail, so to speak. All right. Well, we're Let's making see. progress now, I guess. Ella. So, you're Walter's friend. I know he chose you to head this project as some sort of favor. Honestly, as senior technical designer, I was hoping to receive that honor, but um, uh, there's always next time. Regardless, I'm excited to help you out. Do you have any experience building spaceships? Starship design. I'm practically a professional at this point. I've done a little work on starships. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm practically a professional at this point. This is wonderful to hear. I hope for all of our sakes that you are not overselling your ability. Now, I know you've been asked to give feedback on our design proposals. Would you care for a brief synopsis of mine? Yes, please tell me what sort of ship you have in mind. Can you tell me about yourself first? Tell me about yourself. I'm the most senior designer on this project, for one. Despite all the acclaim he gets, I actually referred Frank to his current design position. He and I were in the same design program when we went to get our degrees back in uni. We support each other as friends as much as possible. Even when we disagree. Aww. I love my job here. But I dream one day of working for a small startup or running my own design firm so I can work on custom ships. Instead of mass-produced products. Hmm. Yes, uh, please tell me what sort of ship you have in mind. Of course. But first, let me ask you this. What pilot demographic is currently being underserved by the current starship market? I don't know, but I feel like you're going to tell me. Commercial salvagers. Pirates. Explorers. Personal passenger chauffeurs. <laughs> fucking Don Draper over here? I don't know, but I feel like you're going to tell me. Well, you're not fun. My idea is a little less... conventional. I believe we should invest in making a dedicated exploration ship marketed towards citizen scientists. Sure, we and other manufacturers have lines of exploration ships, but none built with the average consumer in mind. It's my hope that we can jumpstart a new era of affordable, accessible space exploration fueled by ordinary people like you and me. Okay, well... <laughs> That's a great idea, but I feel like a lot of that is going to hinge on where the main story of this video game goes, right? Depending on how the main story ends up, that could be a great idea, and you're about to enter first in a booming marketplace, or it could be an absolutely horrible idea and bankrupt the entire company. <laughs> right? Because, I mean, this very directly plays into, like, a lot of the theming going on with Starfield with regards to exploration, right? With, about, like, how people have lost faith in or have lost the luster the the passion okay. for exploration you know? which means presently currently in the world without any potential player agency playing a role in like the main story potentially i don't know how it'll go uh but presently no one's gonna buy this right everyone is disillusioned we're living in a world where people don't give a shit People are, have got the settled systems. No one gives a shit about Beyond It, hardly, unless they're like a pirate or something. People are just fighting over the same fucking rocks that they've got. No one wants to go out there and see the great beyond. I'm sold. Sounds like a great idea. Not a bad concept, but that seems like it'd be a very niche product. Hard pass. Seems like a bunch of boring nerd stuff for nerds. How would I design a ship like that? I'd start with a small ship profile. It won't need much storage or passenger capacity. Then, of course, you would want an advanced grav drive to reach deep space and plenty of energy for extended flights. 
In order to keep costs down, it likely doesn't need expensive weapon systems or defensive measures. It won't need those where it's going. And of course, high-end scanners and other scientific equipment is a must. Hmm. Oh yeah, you can't like buy scanners and scanner upgrades for your ship. It's purely a perk. Huh. Yeah, it never occurred to me. Interesting. Okay. Not a bad concept, but it seems like it'd be very niche. Yeah, that's what Jules said too. But at least that gives me something to think about. Thanks. I'll refine the idea and propose it next time, I guess. I mean, you should still work for Walter. But you should work for him at the lodge. Like, let's be real. You should be, you should be making custom ships for like constellation. If 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 he could afford it, if it were feasible, that is exactly what you should be doing. And also like building shit onto the space station that we have, the eye, shit like that. You know, what does your job here entail? What do you think um, of the company? Did you just check out of this conversation? No, I've never been more involved. I'm talking to the voices. <laughs> I am the voice in others' heads. <laughs> what does your job here entail? Well, as a senior designer, I'm trusted to work on some pretty important features on these ships. Most of my work is on the technical features, designing them to be more user-friendly. Computer systems like navigation, targeting, you name it. It may not be as glamorous as what Frank does, but without me, these ships would be almost impossible for the average consumer to actually use. Hmm. What do you think of the company? Why do I feel like answering this could be a trap coming from someone who was sent here by Walter to step in and take <laughs> over our project? That's a very fair assessment. Uh, it's not like I have anything to hide. I used to think working for a super wealthy corporation would be terrible, but honestly, it's pretty great. They've been good to me, and the stability is way better than any startup. I've had opportunities I wouldn't have anywhere else, so yeah, pretty great. That's very odd, considering she just said that she would kind of want to work for a startup at some point, or have her own. Okay. See you around, I guess. Alright, let's see here. Give feedback on the team's proposals. Oh, okay. Sure. I'm actually kind of amazed we finalized the budget. That was relatively painless. This is going great. Just fantastic. I can give you some feedback on your design proposal if you'd like. Oh, yes, I actually do have a proposal. I wasn't really expecting you to give me feedback, but why not, I guess. I'd like to see us branch out a bit more in the Starfighter market. Bounty hunting and mercenary work are Whoa. both big these days, especially among the hard-blooded free stars. I like it. That seems like a surefire win for the company. Maybe you should work on that pitch. I'm not so sure a consumer starfighter is the way to go. Eh, this definitely isn't the way to go. Really just a bad idea. How would we go about designing a starfighter like that? Is there a lot of demand for starfighters in the consumer market? How would we go about designing a starfighter like that? We'd want to give it strong weapons. Tough defenses, plus good speed and maneuverability. Most Starfighters are fairly small, and the tricky part is keeping costs down with all those fancy modules. Right. I mean, this is also sort of highlighting the different types of archetype or archetypical ships that the player can build. You know? There's the the one for having passengers with you. There's the ex exploration one. To where you can go out really far with your grav jumps. Which, granted, given the fact that fuel isn't really a big issue, that's less of a concern. So that really isn't much of an archetype now. Especially with regards to there not being, like, scanner upgrades and whatnot, you know? But, uh, this one, like a Starfighter, the Hauler, the one that's like a ridiculously huge luxury ship or whatever. <laughs> right, that's just to look cool. <sighs> oh, sorry. Just thinking to myself. Uh, is there a lot of demand for starfighters in the consumer market? I'm glad you brought that up. No. And yes. There's a lot of work out there that requires a capable fighting ship. But the real success comes from UC military contracts, which we would hope to attract by building a higher-end version of this ship platform for them. 
Right. I mean, I feel like we should be moving... Like, Stroud Eklund should move horizontally toward... Like, to something more related to what they're already known for. You know? Like, like they said, the luxury liner thing. The next step would be a more affordable form of luxury for the family. You know? I think the family one is the best idea here. You know? Like, this is so out of their wheelhouse just as much as the hauler thing is. They aren't known for that kind of shit. I like it. That seems like a surefire win for the company. Maybe you should work on the pitch. I'm not so sure a consumer starfighter is the way to go. Nah, this definitely isn't the way to go. Really just a bad idea. Hi, yeah, uh, and Deimos really here? has that market cornered from what we, like, understand. You know? And they've got the UC contract, like, out the ass. You know? Okay. I'm not so sure a consumer starfighter is the way to go. You could be right. There's got to be a better way to pitch the idea. I'll give it some more thought. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, I got 100 XP for that. We'll cool. chat again soon, okay? Wow. Alright. I like it. What a fun little quest. Stroud Eklund. Ah. Cool. Oh, look at these things. I wonder if at a certain point you could see these moving, you know? I think you could see parts and stuff moving at the... Well, no, it was at Sidonia. Huh. Maybe at a certain point they were moving, but it was just too much of a stressor on the game. Okay. Especially for something that you really only see in space when you're flying around. And from a window like this. You know? <laughs> Maybe not worth the... The animation. Okay. Anything else down here? Not yeah. much going on. Huh. Are we in Freestar space, I guess? Is that what they're all doing here? What, sushi rolls? Man, I could go for some... Some kind of sushi now. Well, I say some kind, but I specifically mean... Team. <laughs> I'm a fucking baby when it comes to sushi. I'm scared of real sushi. It terrifies me. I, it, I see it, I'm like, how could I eat this? How could I possibly eat this without getting sick? But I'll fucking eat a California roll. I'll fucking get down with, like, some California rolls and shit. <laughs> okay. Design proposal, Frank Ilmas. You know you. Okay. I guess this could be our reading for the day. <laughs> All right. Stroud Eklund Star Yards. Frank Ilmas design proposal notes. Cup holders doesn't work as well in space. Pouch holders, however, put them everywhere. No seated position should be more than an arm's length from a drink. Gold trim. Accent everywhere. Exudes luxury. Costly, but who cares? Wealthy elites will buy anything coated in gold. Other absurd luxury ideas. Auto spa, heated massage seats, tanning bays, steam pods, walk-in closets, walk-in refrigerator, <laughs> climate-controlled wine cellar, aromatherapy units, luxury memory foam, 360-degree gyro-stabilized sleep pod. Holy fuck, I wish I had a 360-degree memory foam luxury gyro-stabilized sleep pod. Good lord. I'm I'm all on board with the folks who who jokingly say like, "Oh, I wish my bedroom was just 90% bed." <laughs> just a gigantic bed. All right. Also, holy shit, would love a walk-in closet as well. All right. Anything else here? Huh. Oh. Computer. Should we take a peek? Announcements. Reminder, security training. To all from Human Resources Management. This is a reminder to all employees that security training is mandatory and must be completed by the end of the month. Quarterly update. To all from leadership. As you should all be aware, while our quarterly meeting is fast approaching. Attendance is not mandatory, but secure connections are required. We encourage anyone who wishes to join 
Anyone who wishes to join to contact IT to confirm their setup is secure. Press inquiries. To all from PR. We know the press has recently reached out to several members of our staff. Should you be contacted, please reach out to a public relations representative before responding in order to avoid any unforeseen repercussions. Okay. Anything else here? Empty food container, but it's got just raw tomatoes sitting out there. Just loose tomatoes. Hope you have a good stay. Playing cards. Free money. Canuck ham boys. Canuck brand sandwich sliders. Uncanned. What the fuck? They look amazing. Oh yeah, and it's got it's a poutine! I don't know what the other thing is. It looks like a bacon cheese sandwich or something. I would say a BLT, but I don't see any T or L. It's stealing to take it as nice and delicious as it looks. Playing cards. Okay. Board game. Corporate computer. Messages. Oh shit. Regarding adjusted budget proposal. Okay. Mr. Stroud's consultant is requesting a budget adjustment for 200000 for the Zenith project. Despite our best efforts to trim the budget, we found the previous budget to be too limiting to meet our goals. We've taken all necessary steps to reduce costs, but this is the amount I am most confident that we need to move forward with for this project. I am confident that we will be able to set a viable price point and support the marking for the final product. product. Signed Jules Del Gante. Your request has been approved, Issa. New consultant. Since the project seems to have stalled indefinitely, I'm sending in a trusted colleague to shake things up and get it back on track. Effective immediately, you are to abide by their guidance and obey their directives, Jules. Jules, you're still taking point as project lead, so I want you to fill them in with all the details and guide them through our process. Enter, answer any questions they may have and remind the team that this is a direct order coming from me, Walter Stroud. Parts back order. We regret to inform you that the parts you requested, yada yada, yada yada, and this one, are currently on back order due to an unexpected delivery issue. We expect more of these parts to be coming off the assembly line in the coming weeks, and we will ship them out as soon as they become available. Since we value our continued partnership with Stroud Eklund, we will apply a 5% discount off the entire order as a courtesy. Once again, we apologize for the delay. JJ Samuels, Lead Sales Tech. Bonuses. The topic of bonuses was brought up in our anonymous employee feedback forum. Good news! The board has approved modest bonus payout to all employees. The remainder of your bonus payout will be delivered upon completion of project codename Kepler, provided it meets the required launch date and sales goals. Budget proposal? Oh. Budget proposals to be approved only by a Stroud Eklund board executive. Status key open for pending and in progress proposals approved. For proposals that have been approved, but project is not completed. Completed. Project has been completed with final cost total. Cancelled. Project has been denied approval or cancelled for various reasons. Zenith. And we've seen these ships, right? In their star yards. Okay. Project closed. No further adjustments can be made. Budget overview for Project Zenith. Status R&D finished under budget. Estimate parts... 32,000 labor, 50,000. Total, 82,000 approved. Actual. Wow, how was labor so significantly cheaper? It almost reached 10,000 cheaper. Huh. Kestrel, complete. No further adjustments can be made, yada yada. Oh. Wow, this one came down to the fucking wire. Labor ended up being more expensive. Huh. Black hole? Oh, fuck. 
Okay. Yeah, holy shit. 70,000 in parts. Yeah, what the hell? Okay. Shit, okay. Over here, can I look at this? No. I think we may you have, have a looked good at day. everything. Let's do a once over with the scanner. Let's see, anything of interest here? Anything going on that we need to look at? We looked at this computer, or no, I was thinking of the other one. Okay, yeah, this one. Yeah, I think we got it all. Okay, cool. Alright, well, I suppose when next we come back... Well, hang on, let's look inside this real quick. Anything good? Circuit board, hookah canister. Okay. Fancy compass. Huh. Okay. Wait, how much is that? 140. Okay. Yeah, I suppose when next we come back, we will go pick up some spacefaring missions and get this shit, uh, their diagnostics or whatever, right? Their testing ran for Hope the ship. Good stay. All right. I wonder if it'll actually show up available to buy. Nah, maybe not until Starfield 2. <laughs> All right. Until next time, please take care of each other.